This past week, I had the privilege to uh, head out to Sioux City, Iowa, which I never realized uh, is connected like across the river from South Dakota and Nebraska. Uh, so it was a long trip out. I've always had a, like a little bucket list kind of thing that I tell my wife, I'd love to take Lincoln Highway, which we kind of live on. I'd love to take Lincoln Highway all the way to California. Um, after driving on it for about a half a mile, I decided that that's just not the way I'm going to go. I'll never, ever, ever get there. But I did stay off the interstates, um, and it was a, an incredible trip. I uh, had two opportunities. One, uh, about two years ago, I was asked to be uh, um, like an overseer for a church in Manson, Iowa. A little, little tiny town, 1,700 people in this town. And what they wanted me to do is just provide encouragement, counsel, kind of oversight for this particular little, little church. Uh, so once a month, I talk to the pastor on the phone, but I've always wanted to, and they've always wanted me to come out and see the church. Uh, I was also invited a, a, just a little bit ago to go to Sioux City, Iowa, and uh, for, with Time to Revive, Kyle Martin spoke here uh, last year or so, maybe a year ago, a couple years ago, and um, just share Jesus with the people of Sioux City. And so I thought, well, maybe I could do both of those together. Maybe I could uh, meet with this church and uh, also go to Sioux City and found out that they're right on the way. So it was a great, great week uh, to just see God at work. Um, so today we're, we're really looking at, and I've been doing this for quite a while, like what is the church supposed to be? Like many of us in our minds, we think of a church or we drive by a church and we wonder, what's that church like? One thing I've tried to emphasize is the church is not a building. It's not a service that you go to. The church is people. If you have said yes to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations, you are the church. And what, is, what does God want in the church? For instance, we come and we spend an hour in worship together. Like who decided it was an hour? Uh, what was it, what's the time on what we are supposed to do together? What are the things that we are supposed to do together? Would we want God to kind of share this with us? So we're on the, the, the sixth letter of seven letters that Jesus wrote to churches uh, in Asia Minor. Uh, so the first one today, this is the Church of Philadelphia. Uh, to the church in Philadelphia, right? This church in Philadelphia is not in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is in Turkey. Uh, this was the original uh, Church of Philadelphia. Does anybody know what Philadelphia means? Brotherly love. That's going to be important. This is a church that was known for their love for each other. It was known for, like, do you love the people of Fort Wayne? What would it be like for our church to be known? But that's the church that loves people. That's the church that reaches out to people. Um, that's what Philadelphia was known for. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. I got some keys up in front of me. This is important that Jesus emphasize that he's the key. What does the key do? A key either unlocks something so that you can get into it, or a key locks something so that people can't get into it. You're going to find that Jesus describes himself as the one who opens up things. He's the key. So what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Now he describes the people. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Do you know what the number one thing that they had going for them? That Jesus had the key and he opened up a door. Like that's the one thing that was going for them was an open door. Um, there's not much else going for them. As you begin to look, he says, I know that you have little strength. Yet you have kept my word if not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. 
Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. To him who overcomes or is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. Isn't it interesting? He says that he will write on them. What do we call it when you write on someone? It's a tattoo. There's never been a history. There's never been in history a more tattooed time, has there? Um, like, I'm not, I'm, I, like, if I could say, show, show your tattoo, like, everybody's got, like, it seems like a tattoo. Can you imagine getting a tattoo from God? What's he say? I'm going to write my name on you. I'm going to write the city of my God on you. Wouldn't that be very, very, very cool to have God write your name or his name on you? And lastly, he says, to him who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He's constantly saying this because one of the keys to the church, if you want to be the church of God, you've got to have ears that hear what God says to you. Like we all have ears, but some of us, our ears are attuned to God's voice. And we listen to what God has to say to us. Some of us don't hear from God. Some of us hear what the world is saying about us, what their name written on us is. But he says, I, w- I want to speak to you. I want to lead you. Notice that he describes himself as the one who holds the keys. And he talks about so much being like, I place before you an open door that no one can shut. And I, and I shut doors that no one can open. You got to have a key to get into where God wants. So we come to him to get this. But once he opens a door... Do you take it? You see, that was the one thing about Philadelphia that he loved, is when he opened the door, they took it. Like many of us have open doors in our lives. Um, Have you ever had an open door that came, that it changed your life by the people that you meet? Uh, It changed your life by the things that you were to do? Like God placed, he like opened a door that changed your life. Some of us have had open doors that we never took and we were filled with regret because you never know what our life could have been if we had taken that open door. I want you to think about these doors right over over here. Um, If you walked through those doors, the moment you got on the other side of the doors, you're in a different place. You've got different opportunities that are out there. There's a different atmosphere that's out there. Those who walk through open doors experience new things, new opportunities, a new atmosphere. But the thing about going through a door is you don't know what's on the other side. Isn't it human kind of nature to take what we know, like right here, and over what could be out there? Like, we'll take what we know in this place over the potential of what could be if we walked through an open door. But he's very clear. I want people, my people, to get used to taking the open doors that I get them, to walk through the opportunities and the open doors. How are you doing at this? He begins to describe this, um, and and then he begins to, to say, you know what? You don't have any friends. Like the people, they're lying about you, so they weren't networking to get open doors. They weren't strong with their resume to get open doors. They even were going through trials. It wasn't those things that opened the door. It was literally Jesus that opens the doors. What are you relying on to write the story of your life? Now, I believe that God has has things that he wants to do in us and through us. And he says this, remember who holds the keys. I'm the one that holds the keys. Can you trust me to go where I lead you to go? If I open it up, lead me where to go. This week we went out to to Sioux City, and one of the purposes to go out there was just to share Jesus with people. I went to a church service, and at the church service, you imagine me doing this to you one time. 
they, um, they told the congregation, we're going to sing one song, and then we're going to divide up into groups of twos and threes, and we're just going to go out and be the church. <laughs> How many of you would like me to do that? <laughs> like, what, what are you feeling right now when, when I say that? You know what? That's an open door. And an open door feels a little scary. An open door feels a little awkward. In fact, I knew this was coming. I have a friend named Gary. Uh, Gary lives in Arizona, Sedona, Arizona. And years ago, uh, Gary was the one that traveled from Sedona, Arizona to Indiana to help me learn how to share Jesus with people. So how many, he came in January. Who comes from Sedona, Arizona in January to Indiana? You can get a cheap flight, by the way, going this way, not going that way. Um, he comes, and I, I just began to learn, there's something about Gary that's different than me. Gary seems to hear God's voice to the point where he trusts it. Like every one of us, I believe we hear God's voice, but most of us doubt it. I wonder if that was God speaking to me. Are you like that? Like, was that, was that a voice of God or was that me? Gary just pretends it's God. For instance, one time um, he was driving down the road and he was intentionally looking for somebody to encourage, somebody who was in need, somebody that he could share Jesus with. So I ask you, is there anybody in Fort Wayne today that's crying out to God? Is there anybody in Fort Wayne that needs Jesus? Is there anybody in Fort Wayne that just has another need that they need God to come through for them? What would it be like if we just had ears to hear where God was leading us so that we could get to the right place at exactly the right time? Gary's driving down the road. As he's driving down the road, he's saying, God, would you open a door for me? And he looks over and he sees an open door in an apartment complex in January in Indiana. It was literally in the teens or below the teens. It was a freezing day. And he thought, who would open up a door in their apartment building unless it's an open door from God? So he pulls over, walks in through the open door. What do you do with an open door? You walk through it. He walks through the open door. He looks and sees four apartment doors that are there. He notices that under one of the doors is an electrical cord that's running, a, an extension cord is running underneath the door. Uh, it's coming out to an outlet outside the apartment. And he decides, well, that door is kind of open. Why don't I knock on it? Can anybody say awkward? Um, is that, is, would that be awkward for anybody? How do you explain it? I was driving by, I saw an open door, I came and saw an extension cord and I knocked on your door. Hi, I'm Gary from Arizona. <laughs> he did that. Friends, walk into the awkward. Embrace the awkward. You don't have to embrace it too long because God shows up in the awkward. It's, it's so amazing how God shows up. So he knocks on the door and he just says, I'm from Arizona. Um, we're around praying for people, seeing if they have needs. Do you have any needs? And the person says, our electric has been off for several days. We've been trying to get it to turn back on. Would you pray that we would have electric? Sure, <laughs> I'd pray. So Gary and his little small group, they join hands and they pray in that apartment. And as they're praying, within seconds, the electricity pops on in the place. It had been days what would you do? Like, the, like, Gary was amazed. He was shocked. He was startled at God's goodness in that moment. And then he just said, you know what? God showed up here. Um, can I give you a little gift? And he took out a little wristband. And he says, let's remember this moment. And he gave them a gift of the wristband. And he said, let me just share with you in the Bible just five scriptures of what God has done. For your life and what God means. Everyone in that apartment said yes to Jesus that day. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So I'm, I'm, it's, I'm I, so this week Gary comes up to me and he says, Fred, would you go out and share Jesus with me? Um, what is the answer to that question? There's two answers. One is, I don't really want to because I know it's going to be awkward. 
Number two is, I can't say no because I know it's going to be amazing. Let's just embrace that. That's the truth. It's going to be awkward until God shows up, and then it's going to be amazing. And Gary says to me, it's going to be this, this is going to be all about timing. Why don't we just pray right now, God, get us to the right place at the right time for the right person. And we're going to trust that every time we get stopped by a light, every time that we get distracted or turned one way or another, that God is just getting us to the right place at the right time. And that's what happened. After about 20 minutes of driving, we pull over um, into, into an apartment complex. We turn off our car. As we turn off our car and open the doors, a 16-year-old boy walks out of the apartment complex. Like our doors are opening as his doors open. Isn't that the open door that God does? Our doors open and we get out of the car and now we walk into awkward. Let's just admit it. How do you walk up to a 16-year-old and say, I'm Fred from Indiana. I'm Gary from Arizona. We've come to Iowa for you. But that's exactly what we said. The next question we asked, do you have any needs that we can pray for? And he said, no. <laughs> Just like that, no. And I said, okay, good. <laughs> I thought, we're done. We found the wrong person. I'm going to go look for the right person. <laughs> Gary smiled, oh, come on. You have to have a need. He says, no, I really don't have a need. At that point, I just said, uh, how, how old are you? Like, you don't look that old, and it's school right now. He says, I got kicked out of school. And we laughed and said, yeah, you have no needs, do you? <laughs> you know, we, that, that's when the laughter came. That's when he began to laugh a little bit and, and just began to go, isn't this crazy that I would come from Indiana, Gary would come from Arizona, and you would be home alone <laughs> here today, that you would walk out of your apartment at the same time that we walk up and we just began to talk. We began to pray for him. And he began to share some of his needs. And awkward began to get a little less, a little less uncomfortable. We gave him a wristband. We said, uh, would you like to hear five verses about what Jesus has done in your life? We share the five verses. The last one is always the green one. The green one that he began to read was, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he read that out loud and he looks up and he says, is that true? Is that true? He says, well, he here's what's true. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, he said, I do. If you confess with your mouth that he's Lord, he says, okay, I'm willing to do that. Then the scripture says, You're, you are saved. And immediately, this kind of shy, awkward kid, he just sticks his hand up to give me a high five and says, can we go share this? Like, it, this was minutes of awkwardness to breaking through some ice, to wondering if he trusted us, to within a second of him saying yes to Jesus, he says, can we go share this? This was not his apartment complex. His was the one behind. He says, there's somebody in that apartment complex that wants to know Jesus. <laughs> he comes over there, climbs up on the little, um, like the, the railing kind of thing, knocks on a window, just keeps knocking on a window because he wants to share Jesus with somebody. Do you notice that there's two wristbands in his hand? Because that guy wouldn't come out. I wouldn't either. If I, you know, this guy's not going to. But he's like, I want to share Jesus with people. Friends, the only thing we had was an open door. And it's the only thing the Church of Philadelphia had was an open door. And the question is, will we take it? Will we, will we walk through the open door that God gives every one of us? I'm not asking you to just walk up. Like we passed dozens of people on the way to this one. Many, many people, perhaps that needed to hear about Jesus, but we weren't just looking for anybody. 
we were looking for the one that needed to hear that day, the one that was the opportune moment. Uh, that one church service, this was Tuesday, Gary and I uh, were talking with this young man. On Thursday, Gary says to me at the church, or Wednesday night, he says, will you go out with me at the church service to share Jesus with people? My first response was, I don't want to. <laughs> Why? Because I am scared to death about the awkward. I am addicted to my comfort zone. Are you? But there's a part of me that said, I can't miss this moment. That particular time, he says, I think we're going to go to a mall because it's going to be dark. We want to see people. We went to this mall. As we walked into the mall, there was no one in this place. Literally, it was two minutes from shutting down. Uh, we walked up to a Smoothie King place, and there was a young girl that was um, running, the, running the place, and we just started with our line, hi, I'm Fred from Indiana, this is Gary from Arizona, do you have any needs? And found out that this young girl was from Nigeria, the very place that we prayed for earlier today, the place where we had prayed earlier that day for the pastor that had been shot and his wife had been kidnapped. We ask, if you are from Nigeria, what are you doing in Sioux City? She said, we came here with our family for safety. We came here because we were scared for our lives. So we began to encourage her, began to pray for her. And then as we left, there was the gates were shutting on um, the mall. And as the gates were shutting, there was just a little two-foot area that we walked through there was a guard that was standing there. We walked through the gates, and we just asked the guy's name. Hey, what's your name? And he said, Emmanuel. <laughs> what did we just sing about Emmanuel being with us? I really believe that it was God that opened the gates, that God that kept the gates open, that God that opens our doors, and God has a story for us. Do you hear this? What is it? Can you get out of your comfort zone? Can you walk into the awkward and just see God at work? Just do what the Church of Philadelphia stands for. Is there anybody in Fort Wayne that needs love? Is there anybody that has a need? If you love people and have a need, walk through the door. That's as simple as it is. Walk through the door, love them, listen to them, pray for them. Do not beat the door down. You don't, like Gary even said to us, like we don't have to go talk about God. They'll bring him up. As they bring him up, then we'll talk about God and then just walk through the doors. This is the kingdom of God. I want this, what I want us to bow, bow our heads. Every one of us is going somewhere this week. Can you go with ears to hear and eyes to see, a heart to love, and God, I pray that you would lead us, even through the awkward, into building your kingdom. God, I pray for each person that they would be commissioned today to be the church wherever they go. And God, I pray that you would just open the doors for us to build your kingdom. So right in this moment, it's about our eyes seeing, our ears hearing our heart loving and listening. So let's prepare those for our outreach into our community this week. you
Thank you that you care about the people who are crying out to you that we will meet this week. So God, we pray for some kind of a prompting in us, something to rise up within us, make our heart beat a little faster, make our eyes just stick on something, help our ears to hear, somehow get us in contact with the people that are crying out to you here. God, I pray your anointing upon us. May we worship you and love you all week long. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So I pray that you would be commissioned now to go into your mission field. In Jesus' name, amen.